You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. Awesome indeed. Haven't said that in a while. It is episode number 378, and we are glad that you're with us as always. We're also very happy for those reviews that you have been sending in. And yes. if you find the podcast useful or valuable, please write us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Podomatic, wherever. Maybe give us a share. Tell your friends about us if they're flying drones. Subscribe maybe so you get it every morning in your inbox. That or maybe you- afternoon. Depends. Actually, subscribing to podcasts has really helped me because I drive so much and sometimes I forget to download podcasts yeah. before I drive. And when you subscribe, voila, they're already there. Oh, cool. Yep. Yep. No, I'm with you. So, I do the same thing. And I don't have good service out on the road. I've got that T-Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> it's good in the city, but, but you have the unlimited country. data, right? That's why I you do. have T-Mobile. That's, I do. That's some valuable stuff right it there. Is, especially when you're using like 30 gigs a month. So. Yeah. Especially when you got, <laughs> I will tell you though. A little plug for who we use. Why would I plug who we use? I'm not going to tell you who it is. But we had like 12 gig, and I called because I was complaining because we kept going over it because my kids use too much. And just through a series of, well, I could do this and I could do this, I went from 12 to 32 for free. Really? Yep. I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> that is, you know, it's the small things in life, Rob. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's a big thing. Is this what I have to look what forward to kids? in adult life? <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why I'm living the drone life, so I can uh, dictate my life. <laughs> there you go. That's right. All right. Whatever. Anyway, anyway, guys, thank you again for listening in. We do really appreciate it. Wherever you're listening, whether it's on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, in the car, on horseback, riding a donkey across the border, wherever donkey. you are, thank you. Let's just get right into today's <laughs> you question. You just said that, didn't you? That doesn't happen. Yeah, You could be riding across the Arizona to New Mexico border. I didn't say what border. You just assumed there was the Mexican yes, border. Yes, I did. Racist. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, hey, I was talking about the Rio Grande border. <laughs> oh, my word. Anyways. You want to know something funny? Okay, okay yeah, I'm going to say this. When my dad first came to Albuquerque, we were driving down Montgomery, and Montgomery crosses the Rio Grande, and we crossed the Rio Grande, and do you know what he said to me? I can only imagine. <laughs> what do you think he Do you said? think you should say it on the air? <laughs> I'm going to guess not. No, he said, he said, do we just enter into Mexico? No way. <laughs> yeah. And he was serious? He was dead serious. <laughs> Those people from back east. He even said, he's like, the houses don't look as nice oh. over here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my dad is just so ignorant. It's just funny. Anyway. Uh, ignorant Mr. So Highfalutin Attorney in D.C. That's true, yeah. Uh, anyway, I thought I would give you guys a laugh. So uh, the, the lesson in that <laughs> is don't assume anything ever. And when you have no expectations, you'll have more fun. Let's get to the question. And... You are considered less dumb the fewer words you say. This is why smart people are normally silent. That's right. The, the person you have to worry about in the room is the person who's not saying anything. That's right. Sam. If you're in negotiation and you're talking, you're losing, right? That is true. Anyways, mum's the word. Okay, let's get to the question, yeah? Yeah, let's just jump right in. I think that's a great idea, actually. Hello, this is Kyle out of Denver, Colorado. First, I have to say I've been enjoying the podcast you guys produce. I find them extremely helpful when it comes to finding out more information about drones. My question today is about the first steps to take when you want to start a production company using drones. I've been obsessed with the RC hobby my whole life, and I'm excited to know there's a business opportunity that encompasses my passion for the hobby. I want to know the first steps you guys think any entrepreneur should take to get their feet wet in the industry. This question is specifically for someone who wants to invest in a business but does not want to make the wrong first decisions. Sorry if this is a redundant question. I just think with the new rules the FAA has sent out, there may be a different path to take. Thank you for your time, and I hope you guys have a great day. Kyle, that's a great question. By the way, we love Denver. We love going up to Denver. It's favorite, a fun place. favorite city, city in America is... Favorite city? I don't, I don't have a favorite. Albuquerque. That's not a live. city. Sure it is. No, it is not. What is it? A small a town? town. Huh. Dude, there. this is not a city. We have like right. five tall buildings. Mm-hmm. You know how many tall buildings were in my neighborhood? I didn't know it was a tall building question. I judge a city by how many tall buildings there are. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> we're going to dumb it down Let then. me put it to you this way. 
The yeah. building across the street from my house, which was a condominiums, had twice as many stories as our tallest building in Albuquerque. My favorite city is New York City. All right, my favorite city I is Denver. I New York City. But Denver is right up there. I love Denver. It's an awesome town. I like Denver. Be- city. New York is cool, but you get, a, like, you know, even though people say they're more laid back and liberal, they're not. They're still, like, very competitive, which is awesome if you live there. Denver is a little more laid back, but still you have the fast-paced nature of a city, but the slower pace of the West Coast in a beautiful area. It is. So let's it's stop talking about beautiful. Denver. I could talk about Denver all day long. Yeah, it's great. We talk about this in the book. I we just do. I just read over the book, the manuscript again, and this is all in chapter one. So read the book. All right, good podcast, Rob. <laughs> Anyways, no, That's so there is we today. did because we talked about this and we came up with I think a consensus on what the very first thing you should do is. I think the consensus on the very first thing you should do is go out and make videos. I mean, I think it's it's just that simple. In the book, when it comes to starting your drone business and living the drone life, it's all about becoming really good at flying drones because if you can't do that thing, you have no value to add. No. So when you say go out and make videos, you're saying become a great pilot. I'm saying become, well, if he's talking about a production company, there's so much more than just aerials. True. So much more. In fact, this is something that I've been realizing, and if you want to really make money, become a production company that's really good at aerials, why you can make so much money, it's stupid. If you think three grand a day is awesome, wait till you move up to 17000 a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, it's, uh, it's better. I have a friend, I'm not going to say his name. It starts with a D. He's out of Salt Lake City. You could probably guess who it is. I'm serious. This is one of my friends. Mm-hmm. He charges $100,000 a day. Wow. And he's running a full production. That's amazing. So the first thing you have to get really good at is making videos. Right. And the only way you're going to figure out how to make videos is if you go out and you make videos. Okay. So what does that mean? Like really kind of a concise answer to what does that mean? Make um, videos. Try to make three to five minute YouTube videos that showcase a story in, uh, have lots of different types of shots in them, uh, include sound, interviews, aerials, establishing B-roll, slider stuff, Ronin stuff. I mean, you've okay. got to get comfortable with what you're making. You've got to go out and make videos. Another thing yeah. you can be doing is also watching other videos that you enjoy that have a lot of hits um, so you can get an idea of the style that you want to create, but also become flexible in the styles you can create. So make no mistake about it. This kind of a business means making videos. Yes. Is that a, a succinct way that it can be put? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and I would say the next few steps should all be done simultaneously. Right. But not to a point where you're losing quality. So here, if I could go back and restart my business, mm-hmm. I wish I had $25,000 in my account so that I could literally just focus on systematizing how I make videos. Because if I would have done that first, I would have been able to produce 10 times the number of videos just because I would have known how to stay organized. I would have understood the intricacies and potential problems that can happen when you're not organized Mm -hmm. uh, and succinct. And honestly, your business plan should literally have a step-by-step system of how you deliver whatever product that is from introducing yourself to a client to final delivery. And that should not be your final step with a client. Your final step should either be follow-up surveys or take your clients out to uh, coffee sometime. Because it's about the referral, by the way. Well, it's about the referral. It's also about the relationship. And a lot of people really forget that. Uh, The other things I would be doing is building my audience Mm -hmm. because the price that you can charge is directly related to the size of your audience. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I would be networking and I would be offering a lot of free gigs if I was just starting out because you, again, want to build relationships with people. You want to be building a demo reel right. while you're going out in step one and making these videos. You should have a demo reel in mind because you want to be able to showcase what makes you different from everyone else. Yeah. So I guess I would put it in these terms. The first thing you should do is find a quiet place wherever you like that to be at the lake, in the mountains, doesn't matter, at the library. Does anybody go to the library anywhere? I do. I don't know. Yeah, I like actually, going to the my store. family goes to the library. I really enjoy going I to bookstore. Anyways, sit down and think about all these things and plan out how you're going to make this happen. Um, because you don't, while you're certainly going to have some learn as you go element to this. I mean, on the job training is very real and very important. The more of this that you can have a plan for, the better you're going to be. One of the biggest things or one of the biggest reasons that companies fail is because of a lack of capital. So you've got to think about where you're going to get your money. 
You know, one of my biggest problems, Rob, is complacency. You just, I mean, you just said your biggest issue is capital. Mm -hmm. Well, with me, I get a client. I'm super happy. I just finished a job. And before I know it, all the money's gone. That is so typical for businesses. And it doesn't (laughs) matter the type of business because you work really, really hard to develop business. And so you have, I mean, you get, you end up going like this, right? These peaks and valleys Mm -hmm. in your business. It's so normal. And if you can figure out a way to level that out and still stay high, you're going to be very, very successful. I, you know, one of the things I learned in Aflac sales school is that you have to automate that process mm-hmm. because that, that cyclical nature of sales is engaging, interacting with new clients, building relationship, delivering, and then you have that low time of re-engaging with clients. If you have an autonomous system, this goes back to creating systems where you're constantly engaging clients all the time, you don't have to worry about the cyclical nature, the hills and the valleys of sales. Yeah, certainly less so. That autonomy is going to be very very, very helpful. But the reality is as well, you're just going to have to set it up in your schedule where you've got time to reach out to people. That has to be a a normal course of, or normal part of your, your week, your day even. Oh, I agree hundred percent. You just got to make that a priority. I could not agree more. But again, going back to it, first step first, make videos, become really good at what you want to deliver. And for anyone who's thinking about starting a production house, I think it's a great idea. There are so many out there that are very, very far behind the times. Mm -hmm. I would say Midwest slash West Coast is more prevalent of that. I just think you see a dissemination of information that really starts on the coast and moves its way in. So um, there's an opportunity there. But in order to, you know, get to the successful part, getting to success is easy. It's really easy. It takes a lot of hard work, and you can do it. The hard part is maintaining the success, maintaining that high-level production and efficiency. So going back to it, step one, do what you're going to do and do it a lot. Have a goal in mind to make little videos, to build your audience, but also build a demo reel. So you see how all these things kind of work together. Once you've done that, you need to focus on the systems in your business. How are you going to run your business? How are you going to do accounting in your business? How are you going to, you know, like there's this new form that Rob is going to be releasing on the uh, Drone You Yes, he is. What, what form are we referring to? I'm referring to the one we talked about on Sunday. Okay, yeah. One of these I forms. Want to do that. Here's why I love Rob. Rob has created a system for every part and every system of his business. And one of those things is estimating how much federal tax you're going to pay on any particular project or job. Rob has an Excel sheet that literally calculates out based on your, I haven't seen the sheet, but based on, I'm guessing, expenses and what's the job total and all that, and really breaks down how much tax you can expect to pay on every single job. And that little tool right there, gosh, that's worth the drone you membership right there. (laughs) Well, yeah. It, it, It actually would need a little tweaking to become what you've what you've described it to be, but nonetheless, it's along those lines. It's helped me a lot because, again, the reality is as much as we don't like to think about it or worry about it, you've got to have enough money to keep your business going, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't do it because of the money, but we do it because of the money, right? Yes. We have to make money to keep going, and we do it because we love what we do. You've got to have good systems in place so that you know how much you're making, you know where it's going, because so many businesses, they get to the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month, the end of the year, and say, where the heck did all that money go? And if you can't answer that question, in the long term, you're not going to be successful. That is true. Uh, Another thing that I would say, for all of the guys who are about to retire from their first job that they've had for 15 to 20 years, and you're, you're looking into getting into drone production, using drones for your business, consulting, whatever it is. I wish I could be in your shoes because you've got a safety net of money where you can spend legitimate time setting up your business properly. Literally, imagine if you could run your entire business off of your phone and that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. Um, It's taken me a long time to realize that, you know, but in like when I owned my last business, I had parts on my website that were just forms that literally like you would never be able to find on the website. Like when I owned Party Trolley, you could go to the mobile website and double tap the headlight on the bus and that would open up the driver's daily form that they had to fill out. It's cool. So, I mean, like if I think you guys are in the best position because you can spend the most amount of time working on your business, you know. You have a lot of time to work on your business and work on your flying. You can't fly all day long, whether you're charging and cycling batteries, the weather, you just can't do it. So augment that time with working on your business. And I will, I will be honest with you. 
the guys who are the most successful, A, are willing to listen, B, will be the most persistent, and C, will plan the most. And also, they have to be really, really good pilots. Let's be honest. If you're, in, be good if you're in drone work. So. Absolutely. And, and I think discipline. People have got to be oh, honest with yourself. Yes. As you're evaluating your ability to start and run a business and, and create a successful business, be honest with yourself about whether or not you're disciplined enough for that. Agreed. Because so much of this requires the discipline to go fly every day, to sit there and work on your editing, to work when you don't the, want to, work when you don't want to, show to work up the on office the business at plan, nine thirty on a Sunday to night, to make the calls that you have to make. All of those things require discipline because the reality is, the successful time it's a lot of fun reaping the rewards but some of that in between part it's not always fun yeah and so you got to push through it you totally do and one of the things i'll say and i'm glad you said discipline this is not going to be like your nine to five this is not going to be at five o'clock you shut your door you leave your business phone and it's all off and it's gone Right. That is a beautiful mentality to have. It's one of the be- great benefits of having a corporate job. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can literally turn everything off at five and you're done. When you own a business, it is 24-7, 365. And if you love your business, you don't mind that. And of course, I mean, it's a bit of an exaggeration. Oh, so well said, Rob. Well, and it's true. I mean, And there are many times I don't enjoy it. There are many times I don't enjoy the drone life. Not right. because I'm not flying. It's because all that paperwork. Yeah. Just like how cops are like, you know what? I'm not pulling over this guy because I don't want to do the paperwork for an hour. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you at all. Don't pull me over. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That's right. uh, Subliminal <laughs> message there. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, I'm being real here. You know, yeah. it, there, there's a lot that goes into this and you cannot underestimate it. But let me tell you this. Once you get your mind in the game, once you believe you can do this without interruption, once you believe this is your way, you will enjoy it. There will be moments you don't enjoy, but overall, at the end of the day, you can smile, go to bed happy, and wake up fulfilled. And I guarantee you, there will come times in the progression of your business where you're going to say one of a couple things, a few things, maybe all of them, such as, what in the heck am I doing? Can I really make, is this really the right thing for me to doing? Can I really make a business out of this? Am I doing this the right way? Am I doing this the right way? And some questions like that are a good thing. I mean, you're always looking for ways to improve, but I mean, you're questioning whether you should be doing this in the first place. That will happen. So you're going to have to be prepared to push through that stuff. I mean, Angela Duckworth said it. The people who have the most grit and are the most willing to work harder than other people that is the number one definition of your ability to obtain success. So, yeah, yeah. And frankly, if I may be so transparent, we're kind of in the middle of all that with Drone U, right? Oh, dude, I'm I spending mean, 80, 90 hour weeks right now. I mean, I, I have been in the office with members every... at midnight. Oh, and, yeah. And you know what? It goes back to that. We're enjoying it so much that it's worth it. Yes. Tim's lost a few gray hairs, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yes, I will say this too. Having the community after all the classwork in Drone U can provide you motivation and inspiration that, that you never true. imagined. It will also help you overcome little obstacles and in workflow, little obstacles and trying to get things done. I'm I, I can't I really can't say this enough. Being a part of the Drone U community has even helped me in my business and it's even helped me and motivating me and mm-hmm. keeping me on top of things. Absolutely. Anyway, that's going to do it for us guys. If you're not a part of the drone, you community, I, I don't know what I can really say to get you to just even check it out. It is so worth it. But Let me uh, just give the, the, the details really, really quick in terms of what it costs you. And it's 47 bucks a month and there's no minimum number of months. So you can try it for one month. And if we're not the right place for you, that's 47 yeah. bucks. And I guarantee you'd get the value just out of that. Yes, and most classes from other schools cost between $150 and $750, and you're going to get a lot more than that in our community. The reason that our price is so cheap is because we want to build the community up so that anyone could get any question answered at any time, and we've already done that. So if you're not a part of it, it's going to be harder for you to, to be in your business. And I mean that. I'm, I, I mean, <laughs> like I said, it's helped me. So anyway, right. we're going to stop going on and droning on about that. Yes, we are. Anyway, get it? I get it. Ha ha ha. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone You. <laughs>